Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studios on the first day of December. I can't believe we are 25 days from Christmas. I don't know about you, but I'm having a little bit of an anxiety attack because uh, the post office is recommending earlier shipping dates to get to everything to people uh, on time this year. December 11th is what most places are putting out as a guaranteed ship for Christmas, which is kind of crazy. But it is what it is, so we're working with this. Hey, Teresa, nice to see you. And Denise, thank you for popping in. And Terry Jarvis, nice to see you here. Thank you. All right, so now that we got a few bodies in the room, I was just warming up the crowd. So today, we, have, we finished off our uh, Black Friday sale last night. Barbara, nice to see you. And Shannon, too. Um... We finished our Black Friday sale yesterday at midnight. Thank you, everybody who was so wonderful in your shopping. We really appreciate your business. But we've started a new special for December. Oh, yes, we have. If you look on the page, if you've subscribed to our website and get emails, um, we are doing a advent calendar sale. Yes, we are. So uh, let me see if I've got it around here. No, it's... I crushed it up and kind of punched and posted it to uh, the bulletin board, so you really don't want to see mine. Uh, hey, Ethel, nice to see you too. Um, so every day this month, up until Christmas, up through Christmas Eve, not until through Christmas Eve, there is a special every single day. Today's special until 11.59 tonight is 25% off our primary elements pigments. Those primary elements pigments, and we will be doing them today in our lives so you're a little more familiar with them. They will work in any water-based product. Don't try them with oils. They will not dissolve. They will not disperse. You won't get any good results, but they will dissolve in any water-based uh, product. I've even put them in top coats to play with getting some funky marbly stuff happening. And I'm going to flip the camera down so you get a better idea of what I'm topic talking about. All right, let's see if we can get me into a good workspace here. Let's flip this up. All right, so a couple weeks back, you might, well, long, longer ago than weeks, it might have been in summertime. Um, you saw me take some printouts that I just printed some free imagery off of uh, the internet and just did some, you know, Googled vintage Christmas images. That's what I did. Oh, and we lost a light. It lost some, lost its power. I guess I have to charge that one. Um, so I Googled this one, Googled vintage Christmas images and printed out a few. And we created ornaments with them. And we are going to decoupage them onto surfaces. Then we're going to apply um, the primary elements. And we might even play with a little glass bead gel. I'm not sure if we have time for that today. So the first thing you're going to do with something like this is, mine is, I use inkjet printers. So you know, if you get inkjet printed stuff wet, it runs. So the thing to seal this up for the next step is take Krylon, this one is Color Master Super. This is their Krylon Clear. It's a hun it's an acrylic clear top, but it's sol. You'll if you spray it, it smells stinky. It's an acrylic. It's a solvent born acrylic as opposed to a water based acrylic. But you spritz it on the paper. You just kind of go and toss it aside and let it dry. And what that does is it anchors the ink so that when we apply it to a background, it doesn't bleed so much. It will probably bleed a little, but not a whole lot. So we're going to start with mounting the image to one of these little gesso boards. Now I get mine at Dick Blick. They're, I don't know, they're like five, six dollars a package and there are four of them in a pack. So I then take that and where's my stuff? We're gonna apply Set Coat Clear from Faux Effects. Now, you can see I write it on the top of here. I have a gallon container of this and that's not easy for me to work with on my table. So I pour it into a smaller jar, label the top so I know what it is. For those of you who are familiar with Faux Effects products, you know Set Coat is their high bonding, prime priming paint product 
It was designed years ago to level out like oil paint, but have this dry time of a, of a water-based paint like a latex, but it is 100% acrylic. This is set coat clear. This is the clear base that has no pigment in it, nothing. And it is great. Usually um, I'm using it, I started using this long, long time ago. So what I would use this for is if I needed to glaze a wall that already had a paint color on it, but <laughs> it was either a quality of paint that I wasn't sure of, or I wasn't, the finish was a matte finish and you never wanna glaze over matte finishes on walls because the glaze grabs and drags. So we used to roll this stuff on over an existing surface that had the right color, but the wrong kind of product. This way we could glaze over it and get a nice slip coat with it. Well, it has a million other uses. Um, I use it, it's personally speaking, I think it's the best product on the market for decoupage. Now I take my set coat, I put it all over the gesso board generously and make sure to get your corners coated because that's where this stuff likes to peel up. Then I take my image and I mount it to the board. Now it's a little hard to see. I'm doing this by touch. I might wanna scoot that up a little more because obviously the paper's fairly opaque on the surface. Now this image doesn't quite fit the board on the width. That's not surprising. Um, I printed these and then bought boards, not the other way around. So I'm working with what I got. So you saw I just put a little more down there because I've moved this around and I don't want to, I've kind of wiped off some of the uh, set coat clear in doing that. So I gotta reapply it and re-adhere. And paper that is porous is better. So when you're using like magazine images and stuff like that, they're really hard to work with. The glossy paper does not like to absorb liquids evenly and it likes to pucker badly. Whereas um, paper like this, that's more pulpy paper, uh, more absorbent will kind of buckle when you first do it, and then as it dries, it wants to tighten back down. And then I'm gonna take the set coat clear again and put it over the entire surface. And then I take my fingers, and usually I have gloves on when I do this. I take my fingers and I rub, and I get it smoothed down. And you can see, I pick up a little bit of color, but not a lot. And I don't mind that because then I go back with my brush, kind of brush it out, blend it out, and it just gives a little more vintage background. I just want to make sure this is well and true. And if I need to, I can come back and put more set coat on wherever it's needed. And I like to let this dry a good half hour or so before um, I try to do another step. And I recommend at least a half an hour drying. And really, you need to test this. If you put your hand on it, it still feels damp. When you want to go paint the next step, you're not ready to paint the next step. So we just take that one now, and we're gonna set it over to the side. Over to the side, somewhere else, other than where I was about to put it on fabric. All right, here's another image that I, I did a little while ago. And you can see it's still mounted on the paper. I haven't done any trimming or anything else to clean that up. So I'm gonna take the back of another one that I've already done. I'm gonna turn this upside down. And I'm going to take an X-Acto knife. And the reason I'm all the way over here is I have a little set coat over here. And uh, I, I don't wanna re-wet the surface of what I'm doing. And this X-Acto knife thing that I'm doing, cutting with the X-Acto knife, gives you a much cleaner cut than trying to trim this up with scissors, which inevitably will give you a funny jagged edge. You'll never get quite tight enough to the edge like you will with an X-Acto knife. And then that just goes away. I'm just feeling all the edges, making sure, see? 
I know sometimes when I cut stuff, I'll find a little loose spot. I'm not gonna take that big old brush because that's full of water. I'll grab one of my other brushes. So you can, as you saw, I have a huge roll of brushes. And I'm just gonna take that and push it down under that corner. Any place I find a lift along the edge, and the edges are the easiest place to lift. Um, and it's because we had a big piece of paper and it wants to push up away from the edge. All right, so I've got to set that one to the side. We'll start with this one. And as you can see, this is the same image that I had before. I just, this one's already done and dry. And that little guy does, over there doesn't want to sit down on its corner. If you're having problems getting something to dry, stick a little weight on the corner if it wants to pop up. And if you get a little funny spot on it, don't worry, we're gonna show you how to fix that. All right, so now I have my image and I have a palette. And these are, you know, these are from any craft store you can buy them in. I have other palettes too, but I actually need one that has little compartments. I'm gonna grab a couple of small brushes out of my brush roll here. And I don't know if anybody else does this. I feel the tips of my brushes as I'm pulling them out to make sure they're clean because there is nothing more frustrating than getting um, a hold of a brush and finding out that you didn't clean it out well and it's got crud on it. And trust me, for me, it happens more than I like to admit. All right, we're gonna pour some of our Vivid Ultra Metallics Multi-Surface Acrylic Medium. And we carry this product, we carry it in multiple sizes. This is my classroom bottle, so clearly I have the big 32 ouncer. Um, I always shake it up because it separates if he sits on the shelf for a little while. That's not unusual for paints. And I put a little bit in each and a bunch of pockets here. Now I could use Set Coat Clear as well, but Set Coat Clear dries to a sort of eggshell finish and the pigments we're gonna use are metallic, so I wanna maintain the glossiness of it. And we are going to dig in with our primary elements pigments. Now I gotta look at the colors we have here so I can choose some colors to work with. Uh, we got hot cinnamon, which is a red color, doesn't look red. We have, uh, there's a little cinnamon brown, which is a reddish brown. I know I need, I got black, greens in here somewhere. Okay, that's gray. We have black emerald, and I know we have a regular emerald somewhere too. That's beach house blue. That's emerald. We have a couple, we got browns, we got all kinds of colors. So I think we'll start out with, since we have a lot of red in the cape, let's find our hot cinnamon, which is a very, while our, this is what primary elements comes in a jar looking like. Let's see if I can get this under a little better light for you. And what's, there we go. They're not very glamorous looking in the jar. And what happens is these don't always look like the colors they're going to turn. See this hot cinnamon looks sort of orangey brown and it actually, blooms very, very, very red. And when I say bloom, you're gonna see what I mean by bloom. I take a little big, bit of the pigment, I put it in the acrylic medium, and when it starts to absorb the moisture, then it's blooming. Think of like yeast, where you're blooming a yeast in warm water, where you're doing something similar like this in pigment. So that brownish stuff just turned super red like our red hot. And look at how pretty that red color is. Let's see if I can get a little, that's a beautiful red. Alrighty, I'll put my stick to the side. Let's 
pick a couple of different colors just to get them going so we have them in. And I think we're gonna go with black emerald, which is a dark foresty green, which will be very pretty. I'll use the back end of this stick. And we're gonna do that one over here. It's almost a hint of olive to this, whereas the emerald green is a brighter green. But this is very good for like an evergreen color. But if I wanted a little other green, I can put some in there. That is the one that I want. This is what I want. And this is our lemon drop color, which is clearly a yellow and it stays yellow when it blooms. I'm putting a lot more pigment in here than I need. It's very hard to measure pigments this small. Plus, I wanna make sure the color's intense enough for you all to see it on the camera. Let me zoom in a little bit, there we go. And when you do stuff with powdered pigments, you mix it into the medium and then you let it sit for a few minutes because even though it looks like it's completely dissolved, usually it hasn't. Usually you need to let it um, sit and the colors expand a little bit. Now see, this is, this is emerald and it looks bluish. Get a little less on there. But it will turn green once we mix it. That's what's funny about these pigments. And I know, I mean, I've used them for years and years and a lot of colors don't look anything in the jar like they do once they're mixed. So you have to check the colors in the samples versus the colors in the jars to know what you're getting. Uh, let's see, let's go with a little bit of uh, beach house blue because we have some blue on our gifts over here too. So let's get, all five of these colors tinted up. It's gonna wait a second, but this gives me a chance to let all of the pigment absorb there before I need to use it. Beach House Blue gives us a nice, light, tropical color of blue. All right, Shut all of these to the side. Let's bring our ornament right here. And again, like I said, if the color corners lift up, and that always happens, um, that can be repaired while you're working on it, but it can be repaired afterwards. It all just works fine. Let me get my brush a little wet so I get a better point on it. I'm gonna take some of my cinnamon. I wanna mix that up a little bit though. I wanna make sure all of those pigments are fully blended. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that hot cinnamon and we're just gonna brush it in here. I am not trying for 100% coverage. I'm not trying for 100% opacity. What I'm doing is pumping up the bright, the lightest and brightest reds because then this becomes much more reflective like on a tree because this is gonna be an ornament. We'll drill holes here. We'll do more stuff around there. We're gonna make ornaments. And I'm just following where the color already is. I'm not creating a new pattern. I'm not creating a new design. Or if I do, it's completely by accident. All right. I'm gonna try to stick with mostly the same color to start with, and I can stick that in the water too. I'm so used to having bigger brushes that I don't keep a water bucket around for. 
so you can see which colors I'm dipping into. Turn this around a little bit. start with another color. Let's go into our emerald, black emerald first. Got a lot of green and I'm applying it fairly watery right here. Because I want to punch up the green. I don't want to overwhelm it. Before I go into that, I'm going to take a little of the emerald green and I'm going to go in here. So we already have a really lovely image, but we just need to punch it up a little bit. All right, let's set that in there for a minute. And while the light green dries, I think we'll play with some of the blue. Colors are easy for me to see. They may not be so easy for you to see on the camera. But I love how this comes out because this really punches up the colors so much. Oops, I dropped my brush. Gee, I've never done that before. So I'm taking the darker emerald green and going back in where the dark branches and the dark spots on the evergreen are just to play it up a little bit. All right, now let's come to the yellow. There is an awful lot of yellow on this, but you don't want to go too crazy on it because you don't want it to make it look like a coloring book image. So you're just kind of putting it in a little bit here and there. So the packages here, there's a lot of color in them. So you don't want to just, these top ones, you don't want to just paint them one solid color. So let's put some of this yellow into the hair. Right, so we have punched up our image to make it just a little brighter. Now you're gonna understand why in a minute. I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. We'll work on this guy. All right, let's take a brush. And I think we'll start with our darker greens. 
again, I am not completely painting in all of this. I'm just coming back and working on the image a little bit to, to bring in a little more depth and color and that metallic shine that looks so pretty on ornaments. And I also use these pigments to tint gel mediums and trawl it through stencils for a wonderful metallic dimensional look. I sometimes mix it into top coats when I want a little swirl of metallic in things. Anything that I want to tint that is water-based and I should say translucent because if you put these in metallic, uh, if you put these metallic pigments in like plasters and stuff, you'll get the color, but the metallics will disappear. White, those plasters will just eat eat the metallic shine right up. You, they don't they don't float to the top and make it all metally looking. Trust me, I've tried it. I knew before I even knew that. For a fact, I found it out the hard way on my own walls. But fortunately, I make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. Okay, so I made that a little bit brighter with the one green. We're going to go in with the other. Kind of put a little zip in the holly here. I love holly. I planted holly bushes outside of our house. We had wonderful neighbors named the Voidas growing up, and they had two absolutely enormous holly bushes right on either side of their front door. So every Christmas, I'd go over and clip holly from their bush with their permission, of course. And... Um, decorate around my parents' house. And we used the holly to decorate cakes and all kinds of stuff. And you see the little extra bit of greens in there, suddenly it pops really nicely. Oh, and if you have questions, please feel free to type them in the comments. If I don't happen to catch them while we're doing the live, I'll come back and answer them when I post the list of products after the live. Um, I just can't always see the questions when I'm looking down, you know, working on the, working on the project. So how's everybody doing on their Christmas shopping? I have I have completely completely done a couple people and haven't even begun some others. Ugh. Just not just not that organized this year. Usually I have a like most of my Christmas shopping done before Thanksgiving. Oh no, not this year. bells down here or the berries I should say all right punched up the berries Let's take another brush and we're gonna work on that bow a little I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow in the bow because that'll Make it pop. There we go. I like how that's going to look. Yellow just makes the ribbon stand out. Now I have these bells to deal with. And let's see, what have I got? Where's my burnt umber? Got winter mist gray. Where's my burnt umber? I know I have one in here. 
Maybe I don't have one over here. Maybe I put it over here. Cinnamon brown, or umber. All right, I need just a, one more color. And then I'll put press and seal over my tray so that um, the paint's usable again, because that's what I've created with the, the clear medium and the pigments, I have created a color of paint. I want to put this in here very, very lightly. I don't want a whole lot of pigment in this because I want to do it like a wash. So I'm taking just the tiniest bit. I'm getting a nice brown, but I can see since it's nice and milky that it's gonna be sheer. brush and a little water to it all and I'm just going over the darker brown parts if I get something I didn't want to get I just wipe it off with my finger. And I can even fade it out with my finger too. Fingers are great tools. Let's take advantage of them. So that's gonna to sit to the side and dry too. Let's see how dry we are here. I need to make sure before we do the next step, I needed to make sure there are no wet spots. All right, give me just a second. Let me go get the next product. our glass bead gel. Now what on earth would I do with glass bead gel doing this? Well, this is what we're gonna do. We've created this great surface, but it's not complete looking. So, we can take hotel room key, uh, old video club membership, anything like that. Um, and we're going to take in our glass bead gel, our Artsyville glass bead gel, which is what looks like this, and it looks white, but it is not. When it dries, it dries 100% transparent. And we're smearing it on here. Now, I'm picking up red, which is going to annoy me. That shouldn't be doing that because that means that red is not completely dry, so... That's my fault for rushing it, but I'm not gonna rush the other one, so if I screw this one up, oh well. I wanna get you through the entire process. And you only want to apply this the thickness of one layer of beads, no more. If you put on more, it becomes really opaque and hard to see through when it dries. So this may have some bleed when it dries, and that's because I'm rushing it. I should have left this to dry, you know, a good overnight to make sure all the pigments. I re-wet pigment, uh, re-wet the, the gel medium that we'd use. Sorry, the uh, Vivid Metallics medium. 
So, okay, that doesn't look like anything. Let me show you where we're gonna get to. Hang on just a second. Alrighty, so that doesn't look like much that way. I did the exact same process to this, and when the bead gel dries, it gives this cool, old, vintagey look with the whole idea. So look how cool that came out. And then I just tied some embellishments on the corners and made the com ornament complete. Let me move that out of the way. So I gotta be careful where I put things down right now because there's a lot of wet stuff around me that you can't see. So this is where we're going. Hey Desiree, nice to see you. So that, this will dry to this. And that's what's so cool. Well, maybe not this one. This one might dry kind of yucky because we know that I've got my <laughs> paint bleeding already. So let's see if I can smooth that out a little bit and I don't know what's going to happen and how that one's going to dry. So, um, yeah. And I will tell you honestly, because I put so much pigment in this, here, let's zoom back out a little bit. Let's zoom back out. Because I put the pigment so heavily in here, as that dries, the pigment may want to float to the top. And if that happens, you know what I do? I take this, I stick it under the sink in the water. And what I, all it does is whoosh off the extra top pigment. It doesn't affect a darn thing because it's been sealed with acrylic and acrylic and acrylic and acrylic. Come back, let it dry. Then I do the bead coat over it. It's always worth checking how much a pigment you put into something because pigments, if you put too much in, and this happens with liquid pigments too, if you pig, if you over tint something, the tints float to the top because there's nothing, there's not enough medium for it to uh, mix with. Happens, not a big deal. You just rinse it off and move forward. At least with the powder pigments, with the liquid pigments, um, that's a little. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. You just might have to wipe it off. The ones from Faux Effects, I don't have those problems with. I've had it with other brands. Don't ask me which ones. I don't sell them, so I can't speak to them. They may have changed their formulations. All right, let's flip this back up. Uh, all right, let me read a few questions here. Let me flip this down just a little so you're not looking like right at the top of my head. Uh, Desiree, yes. You might want to watch from the beginning. So today, again, we were working with today's featured product for our advent calendar sale, which are primary elements pigments. I just wanted to give you a little idea of how you could use them. I've used them many, many times in different videos. I apply them with gel mediums and trial them through stencils. I put them in top coats for some very cool swirly textures. I clearly add them to paint mediums so that I can paint with them. Again, I can add it to the bead gel because the bead gel medium is clear and then you get a pigmented bead gel. Clear, there's a lots of ways, to, any place that you can use any other water-based pigment that's translucent or transparent, you can use these pigments. Do not, again, repeat, do not put them in a plaster. The plaster will just simply eat up all that metallic shine. So you'll lose out on that. Let me flip back and see if I missed anybody's questions. Uh, okay, David Fry, you're asking me, what's my liquid base? It is our Vivid Acrylics Ultra Shiny, I'm reading it wrong. Vivid Ultra Metallics Multi-Surface Acrylic Medium in Gloss. It is a product we carry. We carry very small sizes, we carry large sizes. So definitely look into that. And again, check our page and check Instagram and check your email if you've signed up um, for our emails because we find, I finally figured out how to do an email blast, okay? It took me a while. You're just gonna have to be patient with me. But I have sent out and we will be sending out reminders uh, every day or so. Uh, what the day's special is from now through Christmas Eve. There's a different special every day. Today's special, 20, until midnight tonight, 25% off our, ultra, our primary elements 
pigments. They are metallic. We have about a dozen and a half colors. They're gorgeous. They are, you'll love them. You'll be so thrilled. They can be mixed into any clear or translucent water-based me uh, medium. You don't want it in anything opaque because you will not get the metallics. You'll just get the color. And quite frankly, the metallics are a big part of the payoff. All right, everyone, have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow working on tomorrow's product of the day so that you can see what we can do with those things. Keep an eye out, look at, check your emails. Definitely, this is, we're, this is a new thing. I've never done an advent sale before. So embrace it, because we're not, after this month, there's not gonna be a sale again for a long time. All right, everyone, I'll talk to you later. Have a great one, bye-bye.